What's up, heavy hitters? So today, we're here to talk about back injury prevention. Topo here is an expert, and he's gonna go over how many key movements or So this or is kind of like, to me, the holy grail of kind of covering the whole span of how to protect your back. Uh, you see how many deadlift videos we make, and um, people wonder why or how we kind of prevent injury that way, um, knowing that frequency is there. Uh, so we had to really learn how to really move our bodies in a way that we had to protect our back. And all that, all that comes from engaging your core the right way. And so we'll go over that with some movement stuff, and then you can kind of, like, kind of blanket that over every single movement you do in the weight room. So to this, for me, this is such a uh, a key point that you can look at this video, learn from this, and then actually apply it to everything in the gym, and then you can protect your back that so way. So this is just core knowledge that you need exactly. to know to be a good lifter. Yeah, and that's kind of like this is when I have clients or athletes that come and I tell them this is what's going to take you from a. 500 pound squat to a seven or 800 pound squat. This type of movement is, is so small, but it'll actually propel you into that next level, whatever you're trying to do in your, your lifting career. Dope. Yeah, uh, to be honest, I've never even learned these things and I've got to where I was at just from, I think the biggest thing with me is never using a belt. Mm -hmm. So it had built my core, it built my, yeah. you could say my core, my stomach muscles, and also my lower back. And I think just alone, not using a belt, has produced a strong back for me. Yeah. And it has, you know, prevented me from injuries, right. from back injuries. A lot of the times people can rely on the belt. So like with him, even for however long I've known him, he's been really against like using the belt on the deadlift. Um, a lot of it's because it takes him out of position because he's a bigger guy. But knowing that, he's really focused on his core, um, how to squeeze it, how to prevent that back from engaging a certain way. So him not relying on that bill actually forced him. It's the, it was the harder route and he took that harder route to learn how to engage his core the right way so it didn't hurt his back. Yeah, even on squat, I never, I probably never used a belt on squat until maybe like three years ago or so. Um, I've just always been against, to be honest, anything that assisted a lift, whether it was knee sleeves, elbows, I never used to wear anything right. if you can remember. Right wrist wraps nothing I, I would do everything raw because i want to just have raw power but over time i've learned that there is certain things to use at certain times to prevent injuries and this is one of them so if you guys can learn this um, to prevent a back injury from happening then this is what you need to do because or if you have had a back injury and you want to learn how to prevent it for the next time these are going to be some great movements to learn so yep. let's take us through those football you want to start right now? Yeah. So the first thing, the, the biggest movement that will help anybody become a better athlete is we talk about in our videos, or I've talked about in the videos, is the difference between rotating the hip and then hinging the hip. So the, if I look at two athletes that are doing that exact movement, if I don't know what I'm looking for, it both look like the same movement. Um, I could, someone probably with that, that knowledge would say, that looks like the same squat. Um, but then if I really took down and I put like some sensors on the back and the, the, like the hip, those things like that, you'll see how much compression there is in the lower back and that's what we're trying to avoid. So this is the drill I usually use uh, with my athletes just to show them that um, how much rotation there actually is even though it doesn't look like there's much difference, okay? So I'll do it from a side angle. So just put a regular belt on how you uh, would usually put a belt on. But we need to use a broomstick or a PVC pipe. So this is the broomstick we use with all my clients, so I'll just use this one. So what you want to do is just put this broomstick just straight down the middle. Not enough to hit the floor, but just enough for it to hit your face. And then just come straight down between your legs. All right, so what I'll do is I'll put just tight enough so it doesn't, it'll stay by itself. So if I look at my body this way right here, this is with my hips set underneath my shoulders and then my core is just in a neutral position, right? So if I watch someone normally squat, if I see a beginner squat, how like, say like a fit expo girl, or they call them fitspo people, they usually squat like this. They rotate the hips back and they do that, okay? So you see right when that happened, this broomstick dropped. So that's how I identify that rotation, right? So there's two differences between the squat that I'm talking about. So it's a rotational squat from the hips, this squat, and then that actually causes compression in my back. I can feel it in my back and my hips and it's gonna cause me not to be dead. Here, there's a difference between that and then hinging my hip. So you see those two differences is that this, this doesn't actually rotate out and that means that my core is actually engaged the whole time. So whenever I have clients that have this problem, I always look at the bottom of their belt in their videos and I can actually see this part 
drop out before they squat, and that's how I know they're rotating. So then when I came up with this drill, I figured, let me put something there that, that they can actually see, and that'll make it magnify that movement. So if I'm looking right here, again, if I'm rotating my hips, which basically is just my hip is going like this, and I'm trying to poke my butt back, that kind of looks the same as a hinge, but if right here, now it's magnified because I'm actually rotating it out, and then that broomstick comes out, okay? So we don't want that because that causes compression in my lower back, and then it causes compression in my hips, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through with Big Boy, and he's never done this drill before. Um, it's kind of like the more organic way of learning because then he can ask the questions that you would probably ask, um, how my, my athletes would ask, um, so then you can learn like on the go with him. All right, so we're gonna go with Big Boy, we're just laughing in between because uh, he's a little bit bigger, so it's gonna be a little, look a little different, but uh, we'll make it work. All right, so if you look at Big Boy right here, he said his sponsor is in the way, so it's making the broomstick go out a little bit. But all I'm looking for in this is just the rotational part from this. So like, if, if you were to squeeze your core as hard as you can right now, just squeeze it. See, see how that actually came up and that actually flexed his core and made his rib cage come down. So like, do that and then now do the other, can you, I don't know if you could do it the other way. So like, just right there, him rotating like that, he's not really, it looked uncomfortable with him because he doesn't do it naturally in his squat or his deadlift. Um, so that's why this is actually a really good tool. Um, it kind of reiterates that, that, that movement for him. So all I want you to do is just do the same thing, squeeze it underneath, and then have that, that broomstick stay in position, and then just do a regular squat. Good, so you see how that broomstick actually stays in place now? Now, just, just for shits and giggles, I want you to try and rotate your hip back, and then do the other way. Do you actually feel any compression in your back when you do it? So he's, he's so big that it doesn't make a difference, but um, so this is the, a good key point too, is that a lot of the big people that I coach, um, they naturally don't rotate their hips because they have so much compression, right? So if I, if I already have a lot of compression in my, in my core and then I add a belt, my hips aren't gonna rotate like that anyways. Uh, you see it with the, the, mid, the mid rangers, like from 155 to 245, which that's probably 90% of the population. Um, those are the people that, that do a lot of rotations and those are the people that come to us, say my back hurts, stuff like that. So even with that, I can put that key tool, learning how to hinge my hip that way, and instead of rotating it back my hip, and I can apply it to my deadlifts. So we talked about the deadlifts too, so like how to sit down and, and do something, um, not what it looks like, but how it feels like. So people always try to overextend to make it look like you have a neutral spine when actually you're actually really flexing the lower back. Um, the other, so I have another key drill too that we could have done it either which way, but it's how to cause your rib cage to come down. Um, you want, actually, I think I mentioned this when we squatted the first time of the squat tutorial. Um, I actually had a back injury. Um, I hurt my back because I was trying to do that. I was trying to rotate my hips out to make it look like a squat. And what really made me come up with this plan to, to really fix my back, and that's actually how I got my deadlift up, was I watched Big Boy squat. I actually watched every single one of his squat videos, and then there's a time out we were, uh, I said, started coaching him too. Uh, so I watched every squat video, watched how he gauged his core, how he did, um, like, how to create that power that, that we're talking about. Um, and I actually watched his hips and how he engaged his core that way. So he, he's actually who I learned it from. I just never told him that how I did it or how I came up with that, that plan. Um, but one little drill that I use with my athletes is I call it a thumb drill. So if I, if I just take my thumbs and I put it in my obliques. So you want to do something? So I just put it in my obliques right here so you can try and feel around. Um, there's like a little indention. That's where your, uh, they call it your rectus abdominis. So that's where your, your frontal core is. And then your obliques. Our cameraman is actually feeling his obliques as we talk right now. So, <laughs> so you just feel right here and then you feel your obliques. So what you want to do is just breathe out every piece of air you have in your body. So like just as, as much as you can, release as much air as possible and then see what happens to your chest. So if I breathe out. So you see when that happens, both of our rib cages came down, our chest actually came down with us, and then we actually flexed our, our obliques naturally. So that's actually how you engage your core the proper way. So you, it might sound weird because we breathe in before we lift, but when I push out, now my rib cage is down and I'm short and stockier, just like a Coke can if I were to shake it, the compression's there now. So that's where it comes to the breathing part now. Uh, once I can take my rib cage down, you just don't want to squ squat or deadlift with no air in you. Uh, that's how you pass out. So once I take my rib cage down, the breathing part is most important, that now that my thumbs are right here in my obliques, when I breathe, I want to breathe out on my thumbs. So you see how like when I breathe now, I'm actually breathing out on my thumbs and I'm not actually breathing up. 
because when I breathe up, my obliques actually got skinnier because I'm actually putting that air into my chest. All right, so like now here, it's the same thing, breathe out. And now I'm actually taking my rib cage down. Now when I breathe, you can actually actively see my thumbs come out. So that is when it comes around, it actually brings my, my obliques down to my lower back where my lumbar is. So that's where that actual protection comes from. So I can do that and I can bend over any which way and my back doesn't hurt. But the second I do this, I can feel compression already. So my back hurts when I do it just like that. I deadlifted yesterday. But so those two little drills right there, um, as simple as they are, and I can do them and I can do them wrong. But if I'm actually knowing what to look for, because that's what a lot of this is, is, is knowing what to look for opposed to just doing a movement because it looks right. Okay, so I want to make sure that I'm keeping my core intact. I mean, if I could literally just tell you one thing to protect your back, it would literally just work on your core and then watch your core and then just keep it intact the whole time. And then your feet will take care of itself, your hips will take care of itself, but just focus on the most fundamental thing, which is keeping your core tight and keeping your rib cage down. And just think about being a wide foundation for a house. And that'll actually take care of your lower back. All right, heavy hitters. I hope this helped out a lot. Um, personally, I've learned so, a few things and I'm gonna you know, try them in my training. Even though I think Topo thinks I already do them naturally, mm -hmm. but it's always good to have, um, be conscious of what you're doing at all times. You don't wanna do anything mindlessly um, and just think that you know everything. So it's always good to be a student of the game and that's how you progress in this, in this uh, lifting game and, and in life. Um, is there anything you wanna add though, Topo? Cause mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm a beginner at this type of thing. I'm more of a hands-on learner. Mm -hmm but I'm not a very uh, book smart guy, you would say, but Topo is, and um, I don't know if he has anything else to add, add yeah, to it. Um, I know a lot of this stuff could be complicated. Even to the people that I've talked to like that have degrees with me and, and we kind of talk like the scholar stuff, this shit is confusing to everybody, honestly, because um, we cut it down to such a small movement. Um, so I like to kind of make a bigger picture. So if I were just to talk about things like in real life, um, with Big Boy, um, he likes you know fighting, doing boxing, stuff like that. I, I like to explain it in a way that if you're going to sock someone in the stomach, um, how would you brace for that, right? So he was talking about his fighting when, when we talked about squats one time, and he talked about how he ruts his feet in the floor. That is a, a chain reaction, so the rut in the feet and then the core tightness, that type of stuff is what needs to be impl implied to uh, deadlifting and, and squatting. Um, so if you haven't come from that type of background, uh, the simplest uh, explanation I give to my clients that maybe don't have that the athletic background like that is honestly just act like you're taking a shit. <laughs> it sounds simple. It sounds stupid. It sounds like kind of weird. But if you are con like if you think about you're constipated and you're squeezing the way, even if you were to get socked in the stomach, that's the type of the, the tightness that you need in your frontal and the side obliques uh, to support your lower back. Um, and is as stupid as that sounds, it actually works. I'll say stuff like that to my clients that are really actually walking up to the platform and they're about to go for a really big PR and I see like little things that they're doing that might kind of engage the lower back more or like not engage their core, their frontal core. I'm saying little things like that cued them to engage that way. Cause now they're thinking the whole time instead of like, oh, I'm trying try to keep my chest up right or I'm trying to like look a certain way that I'm literally squeezing and I'm squatting that way and that actually creates power for them. Um, so, I, so like I know, I know that a lot of it can be confusing a lot of the times, but Man, if there is a simplicity to such a exaggerated movement like that. Yeah. Hell yeah, little things like that can help cue people to remember and think about what they're doing. Because sometimes, just like you said, speaking in a different language yeah. that we may not know, you, you can't really relate. But, I mean, everyone can relate to taking a shit, you know what <laughs> I mean? Yeah. So, saying little things like that can put your mind to body in, in sync and you'll learn how to do the movement. So, yeah, so in training or me just telling someone, I'm not a coach or, or a trainer, but me just helping someone out, I like to use a lot of uh, analogies so people can relate to the lift or whatever, whatever we're talking about. An analogy is always good to give someone to relate to something that they're used to because certain things may be foreign, but you give them an analogy with something that they use in everyday life, they may be able to do the movement and learn quicker. Yeah. Oh. And I, we got this idea from actually reading the comments. Um, yeah. A lot, of, a lot of people that were on the comments were saying that their back hurts or how do we not hurt our backs. Um, so like I actively had to do it this way. Big boy naturally, you know, with his movements, did it naturally his way. That's how I learned and watched him. Um, 
but you might be someone that's sitting at, at the computer always hurting their back during deadlifts and actually that will deter you from actually you know deadlifting that's a lot of the biggest things that i've heard is uh oh i don't deadlift because my back yeah. hurts or i don't squat because my knees hurt mm -hmm. which is the funny thing is that if i if i told you right now that if you, you can gauge your core like that and learn how to hinge your hip that i would literally take away from your back pain and your knee pain yeah and if, if you would probably wouldn't believe it at first but i've helped out hundreds of athletes do it um it's not an easy process um, but as long as you know what, what you need to look for now, that's the starting point. Hell yeah. There's always a way to work around things and learn new techniques to be able to lift and do things. Um, you know, we've known tons of people that have knee surgeries, back, and any injury you can think of, and they're still able to do this, what they love, because they've worked around it, learned new techniques, right. different ways to utilize what, they're, what they have, and it's worked. So... If there's always a will, there's a way to do anything. And um, I hope the video can help and help people out that shoot, that aren't squatting or deadlifting and would like to. Hopefully they can use these tips. And if you guys are interested in learning the program wise, how to become stronger and how to set your program up to be a stronger lifter, we have the heavy hitter program strengthcartel.com and little things like sorry sorry to interrupt but like little yeah. things in the program is put so that you learn how to do it that way too exactly so like tempo squats it's a huge yep. thing for us tempo squats front like front plank stuff like that that teaches you naturally to do it so now that you know what to look for when you see it in the program like you'll know why you're doing it right yeah so if you guys are looking for that and interested um definitely something that is worth paying for worth, worth the money and if you guys are looking to do a competition, we got the Dead Game Competition Program that is a 12-week peaking program that will get you right for comp day. So whatever your goal may be, we have a, a program for that. And I just want to cue in a little thing. We'll, hopefully we'll go over it next time because I know Topo's been telling me he wanted to discuss it. But I know something that he um, told me to do in my training when my back was a little sore and that was front squats. And I think front squats really help my overall core strength. And maybe we can go over that. I know it's not an exercise that many people use because it is a very hard lift. But for me, front squatting without a belt made my core like bulletproof. So as for me, I don't think you guys ever really see me do a sit up or a plank or I don't really do those stagnant kind of core exercises. I'm more of a load load my back up or load whatever up and i'm gonna build the core that way and front squats i will say is the best the fastest and the strongest way that i built my core up and shit that, that's a key movement right there so if you guys are really looking to strengthen that core i would suggest front squats and we could definitely yeah. go over those in a in a future video yeah. I actually for me personally as a coach I think front squats is the number one key exercise compound movement that will increase every single movement. Um, oh yeah. He started doing them a lot more, um, what was it like a year or two, two years ago? Yeah, a year or two to strengthen the back yeah. up. And then, so we had a huge um, strength increase from that on the deadlifts and then uh, obviously applied to the other lifts too. Um, Squat, things, like, that. things like that, I mean, you, like he said, more spine loading, core loading exercises where that strength and how to, to thicken the core, even the stuff, the little things that he does on the side cardio wise, like trap, trap bar walks, stuff like that. That's where the core is built. That's why strongmen like, like Brian Shaw, uh, Eddie Hall, those guys are at a, such a level of core strength. That's ridiculous because they're, they have to engage their core while being move, while moving and being by dynamic in their, the way that they're progressing their body. Um, so I, I actually, for me, that's the number one movement for me. Um, and my athletes to, to strengthen their core. Um, but I mean, uh, it, they suck. So that's, that's the only <laughs> crappy part is they, they yeah, suck they ass. Are. Yeah, they, I, we don't like them in a sense, but I've grown to love them because of the production of them. Hell yeah, dope. Well, I appreciate you guys supporting, watching. Uh, make sure you guys comment what else you guys like to learn, if this was helpful or not. And I just appreciate the support, heavy hitters. Keep banging out there.